But then, face to face, now I know in part, but then shall I know even also as I am known. Paul is basically saying, um, the world has an abstract view of what truth is. Now we see as through a glass, very darkly, or as the mirror very dimly. But in Christ, when Christ shall have come, all things would be revealed to us. Truth, Jesus Christ says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. I am the way, the truth, and the life in John um, chapter 14, verse 6. But God, God says, I am who I am. He said, thus you shall say to the children of Israel, I am has sent you. Now, when Moses went up to the mountain to speak to God, and Moses asked God, well, who should I say sent me? And Moses says, I am who I am. And when you go to the people, tell them, God, that I am sent me. But when Jesus Christ says, I am the way, the truth, and the life, Jesus Christ is saying, I am the way, I am the truth, and I am the life. And the I am that Jesus Christ is speaking about here is not just any ordinary I am. Why? Well, the Greek construction is ego I me. Ego is means is the, the beaver. I me is also the beaver, but they're never used together except in, in reference to the divinity. And so the, when the, the, the Hebrew scripture was translated uh, into Greek in the Septuagint, the Greek there is H A S A H A, simply meaning H A means I exist and I will be what I am. Echo I me in the Septuagint means basically the same thing. So when Jesus Christ says, I am the way, I am the truth, I am the life, ego I me, the Jews understood that to mean that Jesus Christ is claiming divinity just in that statement. Now, in Malachi chapter 3, God is saying, For I, the Lord, your God, I do not change. Well, what does that mean? When Jesus Christ says he's the truth, and Jesus Christ says he's the way, Jesus Christ is basically saying truth exists. So therefore, what is the truth? Truth is. Whether we know the truth or we don't, truth is. Because God is. Amen. Now, when God says, I am the Lord your God, I do not change, it's basically saying truth does not change. Mm. Truth never changes. Mm. Our understanding of truth changes when more information is received. And that's why Paul can say, we see now through a mirror or through a glass, darkly. But then here is the point. If we see now through that glass darkly, how then can we know Christ? Well, if, if according to the pragmatists, the truth is a social interaction with reality and facts, then Jesus Christ himself came into the world, and Jesus Christ interacts with the world actively and socially it is god coming to earth saying i am and when you understand who jesus christ is and you accept him as he is then you realize you have a better understanding as to what a miracle is 
Because when doctors can treat you based on the scientific facts that they have, miracles work when scientists can't even understand it. Now, let's go to the text that Paul is speaking about here. Let's go back to the lead text. It says, where there is neither Greek, nor Jew, nor circumcised, nor uncircumcised, nor bar barbarian, nor Scythian, slave, or free man, but Christ is all and in all. Christ is all and in all. Sister White writes in Growing Up in Christ that the plants and flowers grow not by their own care or anxiety or effort, but by receiving that which God has furnished to the ministers to their lives. You go further down, what these gifts of nature are to the animal and plants, such is Christ to those who trust him. He is their everlasting life. Translation, if we can't accept Christ in faith and trust in him for what he has provided for us already, then we can't see through the eyes of faith. Now, in Galatians 2.20, and sorry, in, in this is not Galatians, uh, in Exodus 25.8, the scripture says, God says to Moses, let them make me a sanctuary that I may dwell among them. You see, this is God now building on truth. Now, if God is going to dwell among his people, you're speaking of a social relationship with his people. God being with his people in reality. Now, if God is going to be among his people, God is building from something that he had done already in the Garden of Eden. Because in the Garden of Eden, what he did was to sacrifice a lamb to cover the nakedness of Adam and Eve's sin. And then Paul would say here now, I have been crucified with Christ. It is no, no longer that I live, but that Christ who lives in me. And the life which I now live is in the flesh, I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God. Paul now is accepting Christ through faith, through the eyes of faith, because he has come to the realization that Jesus Christ is as truth is. Okay? But the question we now have to ask ourselves is, who is this Jesus Christ that we must have faith in and we must believe in? Well, think about it for a moment. You speak about the top 21 religion, 20 religions in the world. How did we get to this point? Well, if you go back to the Garden of Eden, after Adam sinned, and they had their children, you had Cain and Abel. Cain and Abel both worship the same God. Isn't that right? But whereas Cain's worship was a worship of convenience, Abel's worship was a worship of obedience. And see, that's where you have the, the, the division of what is called religion and religious beliefs. That's where the falsehood begins. I can worship God or pretend that I am worshiping God, but I'm going to do it, do it my way instead of God's way. And so when God accepted Abel's offering, but did not accept Cain, Cain was angry at God, not Abel. But his arms were too short to box with God. So he killed his brother Abel. And so Jesus Christ must come to earth, very much unlike what any other religious leader has done. You can see the work of Jesus Christ in our salvation. So in John chapter 14, in John chapter 1, verses 14, 1 through 4, 
It says, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through Him, and without Him, nothing was made that was made. In Him was life, because He says, I am the life. And His life was the light of men. And the light shines in the dark places, and the darkness did not comprehend it. There are many people today who are living in darkness who still do not comprehend the light that Jesus Christ is or just don't want to. So, when we look at it from this perspective, we see that Jesus Christ is God. We look at it now from the cardinal points of the cross. Jesus Christ is God. We go to Isaiah chapter 7, verse 14, and it reads thus, Therefore the Lord himself will give you a sign. Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and shall call his name Emmanuel. Emmanuel meaning God with us. But in John 1, 14, it says, And the word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Amen. So truth, Jesus Christ in truth is full of himself. Jesus Christ is full of truth. And so we can deduce from that that Jesus Christ is not only God, but Jesus Christ is man. God taking on human flesh to live with us in reality, to socialize with us, to bond with us, to make life real for us and engage in our suffering, that is what truth is. Yeah. Now, who else is Jesus Christ? Hebrews chapter 4, verses 11 through 14, seeing that we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast to our confession, for we do not have a high priest who cannot sympathize with our weakness, but was in all points tempted as we are, yet without sin. So Jesus Christ is our high priest. Now, verse 16, it says, Let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace, to help us in a time of need. Amen. What does that tell us about Jesus Christ? We've established that Jesus Christ is God. We've established that Jesus Christ is man. Now we but before we go down, therefore humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God that he may exalt you in due time, casting all your cares on him, for he cares for you. Amen. Now we have established that Jesus Christ is not only God, Jesus Christ is not only man, but Jesus Christ is our high priest. Interceding on our behalf in heaven. John chapter 3 verse 2, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher who came down from God. This is what Nicodemus is saying to Jesus Christ. Nicodemus had that meeting with him one night because Nicodemus saw the fulfillment of the prophecy in Jesus Christ and was following him secretly. So he had to have a night conversation with him because there are people among his circle who saw the truth but refused to accept the truth. And then here you have in Luke chapter 24 on the road to Emmaus. So they said to him, the things concerning Jesus of Nazareth, who was a prophet, mighty in deed and word before God and all the people. These men walking from Jerusalem on the road to the end of the crucifixion of Jesus Christ were perplexed in their heart, worried. They thought he was the one who redeemed us. But here he is dead. They see him as a prophet. In Matthew 21, this is Jesus, the prophet from Nazareth of Galilee. So do we ask ourselves, who is Jesus Christ? 
Jesus Christ is God. Jesus Christ is man. Jesus Christ is our high priest. And Jesus Christ is a prophet. Now we have held up the four cardinal points of the cross. What else can we say about Jesus Christ? In Isaiah 53 verse 5, we are told he was wounded for our transgressions, he was bruised for our iniquities, the chastisement for our peace was upon him, and by his stripes we are healed. Jesus Christ came and did something for all humanity because in John 3 16 in that conversation with Nicodemus Jesus Christ said to Nicodemus for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life this giving of his son did not occur just at Calvary because in Revelation 8 30 it says Jesus Christ is the lamb that was slain from the foundation of the world. So even before sin entered into the world, God knew that man would sin. And God had made the provision to redeem mankind from sin. And Jesus Christ had taken the decision, even before sin, that he will come to earth to do this for mankind. So we learned that Jesus Christ is not only God, Jesus Christ is not only man, he is not only the high priest, he is not only a prophet, but he is the lamb Amen. that was slain for our sins. In Revelation 12, 17, it tells us that the dragon was angry with the woman and went to make war with the remnant of her seed that kept the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. But what does that mean? There is truth revealed in there. Why would the dragon be angry with the woman? Because the woman is living the truth. What is truth? Truth is, God is truth. Mm -hmm. What is religion? Religion is a relationship with God. So the woman here is the religion that is, a, is of the able worship. The church that is of the able worship. Mm -hmm. Then the king worshippers will come after the able worshippers. Because God had seen the, 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 the offerings and the sacrifices of the able worshippers, and God has blessed them. But the Cain worshippers will come after them and mind you that when Cain killed his brother Abel, that was the first act of religious persecution. Because Cain did not kill his brother for any reason other than religious challenge. So if the dragon was angry with the woman and went to make war with the remnant of her seed, what does the seed do? The seed keeps the commandment of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. Remember back in John chapter 3, what did God say to the serpent? I will put enmity between your seed and her seed, and you will bruise his heel, but he will crush your head. Persecution started early. Now, if we go here, the question is, are we moving towards one world government and one world religion? And if we are moving towards one world government and one world religion, then whose government are we going to under, be under? And whose religion are we going to be under? You see how the, 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 the firestorm between truth and falsehood are coming to a head. Now, the governance of the planet seems to be moving towards globalization and centralization. As in one government, 
one economy and perhaps without notice to most people. In September of 2015, the United Nations launched what is called the New Universal Agenda for Humanity in its attempt to make the planet into some kind of utopia. Can we achieve any utopia outside of the second coming of Christ? No. So you see where the falsehood is coming. And so Jesus Christ, before he went back into heaven, he was praying for his disciples. And Jesus, so Jesus says, now I am no longer in the world because he is looking at the cross ahead of him. And he's saying, now I am no longer in the world, but these are in the world. Speaking of the disciples, he says, and I come to you, Holy Father, keep through your name those whom you have given me, that there may be one. Amen. As we, Amen. the we here is Jesus Christ and God. Amen. So the disciples must be one in Christ and with God. Amen. Amen. The question is, who was Jesus Christ calling Holy Father? Jesus Christ was not referring to an earthly being as Holy Father. He was speaking to God in heaven. Jesus Christ has already told, told us that we must not call anyone Father. When he says we must not call anyone Father, he was speaking of spiritual things. It's not that I can't call my Father, Father or Dad. But he's speaking of spiritual things. And here, he is saying to God, you, Holy Father, and now you have the, 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 the false doctrine that is masquerading as truth to look like the truth, calling oneself Holy Father, and is going around trying to unite the world in ecumenism. What is truth? Truth is, God is truth. Amen. What we see now, and we don't understand, we still cling to Christ as faith. But in faith. And as we study his word, and the closer we get to him, the more we see our own imperfection. And as we see our own imperfection, we are transformed closer to the Christ, who is truth. Amen. But we can't be close in our lifestyle to truth, unless we draw closer and closer to truth himself. Now when you look at any other religion in the world, as many as they are, which has done what Christ has done for us? I am the way, through the cross. I am the truth, through the cross. I am the life. Life is a miracle. You don't know how it comes into existence, but I am the life giver. And I have proven that to you by resurrecting others. I have proven that to you by healing the sick. Mm. Now, if you look at a Christian who truly is in that close relationship with God, and he's having a terrible time of his life, but yet he can still smile. Why? How cherry is that Christian hope? It's the Christian hope that is offered in Jesus Christ and no other religious leader. Jesus Christ is the leader of the Christian church. Amen. He's the head of the Christian church. Amen. The Christian church does not have any other head. But once we are in the Christian church, let us be able worshippers and not pain worshippers. Because the able worshippers are the true worshippers of God. And when Jesus Christ comes again, he has a reward for his able worshippers. Now, what do we have to do? 
as Christians. Jesus Christ has given us the gospel commission. We ought to go out and seek the lost. Jesus Christ tells us that the Son of Man has come to seek and to save that which was lost. He came to be a reality in the life of human beings. Otherwise, he, would, might, we, he might just be a figment of our, of our imagination. Jesus Christ came as one of us Amen. to identify with us. Amen. And it doesn't matter what scientists say about truth, the social scientists say about truth, basically what they're saying is what you interact with. If God had not sent Jesus Christ into the world to interact with us, many of us would have no reason to believe him. And the important thing about it is this. He didn't have to. He could have spoken salvation. Just like he said, let there be. And there was. But instead, he came in person to make himself a reality to us. Amen. Amen. What we don't understand, Paul says, we will see. And then we will be known as we are known. Amen. But, no. we must first accept Jesus Christ in faith Amen. and learn to trust and obey. Amen. But there's no other way to be in harmony with truth. Amen. Heavenly Father, I invite your blessings upon everyone here today. Amen. May your truth be with us. Amen. May we constantly draw closer to you that we can see ourselves not as we are, but as we are to be through you, your son, Jesus Christ. Amen. We ask that you bless us abundantly. In Jesus Amen. Name. Amen. Sing for a closing hymn. I'm sharing. <coughs> Jesus, the Lamb.